overview of the Citra 5 benefits, or just a, a touch upon the product itself, how it's produced, some of the unique properties of the product, and then look at some more comparison information just to reinforce some of what Dale was um, talking about. So a lot of this is review for this slide, but some it may not be, but it's important about Citrify. One of the most unique things about it is it's all natural and um, is derived from orange pulp and the label declaration is very simple and that's one of the most unique things about the product is that we can deliver the functionality with uh, an all natural <coughs> product. And we don't use any chemicals, I'm going to touch upon that, I'm going to touch upon the process, but it's the amorphous cell structure of the product that makes it unique compared to other, um, other fibers. But there are some other amorphous fibers too, and we're going to touch upon some of those in the other comparison slides. And they, the, the, it's a, the result of the uniqueness of the citrifying comes from two different things. One is the process, and we'll touch upon that a little more, but secondly is the composition of the product. The, the composition is soluble and insoluble fiber plus the protein. So there's the combination of the hydrophobic interactions coming from the residual protein plus the strongly hydrophilic <laughs> reactions and uh, rapid hydration that comes from the soluble fiber and then the insoluble fiber forms the structure for the product for which, which is really what um, opens up once the soluble fiber grabs and, and, and hydrates and because of these properties we're able to have unique emulsification capability and binding ability and um, and just to give a little history for some of you um, some of you it's are familiar, but some of, I've had several questions about just kind of development and the history of how Citrify was developed. But starting in 1998 was when we first started some of the lab work for the product. And then in 2001, um, we established a pilot plant in, in Wisconsin. That's when um, I started working full time, working for Dale at that time. And, um, and then in 2002 is when we really decided and finalized on orange pulp as being our raw material of choice. And knew when we worked on the process, we then in 2004 completed the production plant in Florida. Um, a, a big milestone for us was the Food Ingredients Europe Silver Award for the most innovative food ingredient in, in London. And um, we met a lot of you there. Um, and now, this year, we're nearing our production capacity in, in Florida, so we're focused pretty hard on building more production in Brazil for, for next year that would have double the capacity. I um, wanted to uh, throw in a new concept and um, provide a little more insight or a little more um, information about what John Marcelo from uh, Brazil, what he was talking about yesterday with the beverage products. Um, and this is something I, I think we probably haven't talked a whole lot about, but has a lot of applications in, in beverages. And 
whether it's the Citrify 100, like what's in this example with the tang, for simulating fruit pieces, and Citrify is able to do that because it doesn't have the grittiness like what you might get if it was an oat or a wheat fiber, and it doesn't have the slipperiness of a guar gum, so it can have that soft feel like a fresh piece of fruit in, um, in beverage applications, and so uh, the, if you want, want the pulp like feel, the 100 Citrify 100 is um, like what is in that tank. And then um, clouding agent or just a body agent for mouthfeel also um, is another application just using the 100 M40 or we also do have a finer particle size that we've been working with for this application too. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the processing of the Citrify. Um, starting with kind of what I mentioned before, it starts with the, the open cell structure. We, we, we get the raw material is the orange pulp, and it has the composition of being easy for us to work with, and it's a um, really good raw material for our process, so we don't have to use any chemical treatments or, or solvents, and um, the open cell structure is something that has always been part of our, our focus, and um, being able to dry that is one of the most difficult things in our process, and that's what we have spent the most time on after we did the lab work at the University of Minnesota. And um, that's part of what's in our, our patent portfolio. We have five issued patents. And um, so we've, we've put patents on the, the process, the product, as well as the applications of the product. And, um, and the other part of the technology is just the particle sizing that we do to keep the functionality at um, different particle sizes, so whether it's coarse or it's fine, we're able to maintain the, the functional nature of the product and get the right consistency um, from, for example, using the 100M40 for injection applications is um, something that just we're able to do and, and keep it functional, but yet fine enough to pass through an injection, most injection systems. But just a, an overview of, of the process, there's not a lot of detail here intentionally, and, uh, but this is part of our, a lot of what we show for our, our quality um, paperwork is just basically starting with raw pulp that comes from the orange juice manufacturing, and we send that over to our plant through and then first thing that we do is we heat stabilize the product to kill microorganisms and bacteria types of things. And from there we remove the water and as much water as we can before we do uh, mixing and shearing of the product to help open the cell structure, which we do mechanically. And it's just a mechanical process of keeping and opening that cell structure. And then at that point it's when we dry it. And the drying system uh, removes the water without um, destroying the functionality and keeps the hydration properties of the product. So, and after that it's basically grinding and, and packaging. 